And that's why, again, we're leaning into the next 15 days. In the next several days to a week or so, we're going to continue to see things go up. We cannot be discouraged by that because the mitigation is actually working and will work. Where you saw New York and New Jersey and then the cluster of other areas, our goal, which I believe we can accomplish, is to get the hotspot places, the New Yorks, the New Jersey, and help them to get around that curve. But as importantly, to prevent those clusters of areas that have not yet gone to that spike, to prevent them from getting that spike. And the answer to that is mitigation. Now, the 15 days that we had of mitigation clearly have had an effect, although it's tough to quantitate it because of those two opposing forces. But the reason why we feel so strongly about the necessity of the additional 30 days is that now is the time, whenever you're having an effect, not to take your foot off the accelerator and on the brake, but to just press it down on the accelerator. And that's what I hope and I know that we can do over the next 30 days, 30 days, 30 days. And as I said the other day, isn't this going to be longer than 15 days? How long do you think people should expect to be at home? And as I said the other day, and on one of the one of the interviews, well, what you're talking about is our 15 days to stop the spread initiative. We are a very strong and resilient nation. If you look at our history, we've been through some terrible ordeals. This is tough. People are suffering. People are dying. It's inconvenient from a societal standpoint, from an economic standpoint, to go through this. But this is going to be the answer to our problems. So let's all pull together and make sure, as we look forward to the next 30 days, we do it with all the intensity and force that we can. Thank you. Well, we are joined now by the nation's top doctor, the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams. Dr. Adams, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Savannah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well enough. Thank you for your kindness in asking. I, I, I want to ask you, uh, do you feel like people are getting the message here? You know, we still see people out and about. You had three states holding votes yesterday. Do you think people are sensing the urgency? Back in those days, to show how things have changed, one of the things you had to use, if you used pomade in your hair, you had to wear a baby cap. And so he was up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. Well, he came off, and he said, I'll meet you outside. My car, this was mostly, these were all public housing behind it. My car, there was a gate out here. I parked my car outside the gate. And I, he said, I'll be waiting for you. He was waiting for three guys in straight razors. Not a joke. There was a guy named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, come down here in the basement where the mechanics, where, where, where all the pool filter is. You know the chain, there used to be a chain that went across the deep end. And he cut off the six foot length of chain. He folded up, he said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm going to wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me? He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain and I walked up to my car and they had, they, those days you used to remember the straight race, you'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. And I looked at them, but I was smart then. I said, first of all, I said, when I tell you to get off the board, you get off the board and I'll kick you out again, but I shouldn't have called you, Esther Williams. I apologize for that. I apologize, but I didn't know that apology was gonna work. He said, you apologize to me? I said, I apologize for that, not for throwing We out. feel like if we can get America to all pitch in for the next 15 days, we can flatten the curve, which is a term that you've been hearing a lot, not overwhelm our health care systems. So and 15 days is this. enough? 15 days is likely not going to be enough to get us all the way through, but uh, we really need to lean into it now so that we can bend the curve in the next 15 days. And uh, at that yeah. point, we'll reassess. Okay. ...been able to come to their capital their government 
to talk to their representatives and freedom of the press. These very pictures that Representative Scalise just showed you and talked about, guess what? The press isn't allowed in those facilities. The press is not, the Biden administration will not let the press in there. And certainly freedom of speech. I mean, freedom of, the governor of our third largest state meets with, with physicians and, that, and that's, that, that video is censored because they dare to disagree with Dr. Fauci. So I just want to know when do Americans get their First Amendment liberties back? You know, I don't think anything was censured because they felt they couldn't disagree with me. I think you're pers you're pers making this a personal thing, and it isn't. It's not a personal thing. No, you are. That is exactly what you're doing. No, your recommendations carry a lot of weight, Dr. Fauci. We just had the, the chair of yeah. the Financial Services Committee said she loves you, and you're the greatest thing in the world. Will My the recommendations yield? are consistent. Will the gentleman yield? No, it's my, it's my now, time. Can I answer the question, please? My recommendations are not a personal recommendation. It's based on the CDC guidance, which is which is And which I'm is asking the question, what measures have to be attained before yeah. Americans get their First Amendment liberties back? I just told you that. I no, you haven't you. given anything specific. You said, we hope when this third... Tell me specific. Right now, right now we have about 60,000 infections a day, which is a very large risk for a surge. We're not talking about liberties. We're talking about a pandemic that has killed 560,000 Americans. I, I, and That's I get what that, we're Doc, talking about. And, and I don't disagree with that. And I understand how serious that is. But I also stand it's pretty serious when businesses have been shut down. People can't go to church. People can't assemble in their own homes with their well, friends, I with their families. I think we're starting to people turn a corner and people ones, really people, are. People it's because it's starting to affect people who they see and know. I, I have a 15 and a 14-year-old son at home, and they don't care what dad says, even if dad is the Surgeon General of the United States. But by golly, they they, they right. know you they just said people rant. cannot assemble in their own homes. They can. That's a CDC recommendation for vaccine. Not last people. fall they couldn't. Otto, we want them to understand Not that. Not last look, fall they couldn't. Uh, chances are you don't have coronavirus. Uh, chances are if you do have it, you will recover based on the Korea data, 99.3% of people recover. But what we don't want to do is have you or anyone else out there spreading it to people who are at higher risk. Absolutely. These new CDC guidelines that were announced this week say advise no gatherings of more than 10 people for the next 15 days. You've said we can do anything for 15 days, no, but give but us, give it to us straight. Standards versus when certain things get reached, we might be able to get back to having our liberty. When? What are the numbers? You're going to see a gradual. Isn't this uh, going to be longer than 15 days? Well, How right long do you think people should expect to be at yeah. home, on essentially? Basis, well, what you're talking about is our 15 days to stop the spread what initiative. You're going to see as more and more people get vaccinated and we get over 3 million people a day, you're going to see the level of infection come down and down, and gradually there will be more flexibility for doing the things that you're talking where about. does it get to when it comes down what number do we get our liberties back tell me the number tell when, me the number when 90 percent of the members of congress get vaccinated but you're not a doctor mr clyburn he is what is the number i can't thank give... you for recognizing me mr clyburn thank he you not recognizes uh five I'd minutes like my question answered. It, i don't i don't want reclaiming, reclaiming my time reclaiming my time the order Regular order. No, Just a moment. Mr. 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 Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I don't want you to answer my question. The American people want Dr. Fauci to answer the well, question. What does it have expire, to be? Expire, sir. If you need to respect the chair and shut your mouth. Don't worry about this. We, we, we're going to handle this. And I think Mr. Jordan knows me very well. And he knows full well that we're going to handle this. Your time has expired. And the chair now recognizes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Maloney. Okay, let me ask you about a new study. It was published just yesterday in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it found that the virus is somewhat airborne, that it can stay suspended in the air for up to a half hour before descending and settling on surfaces. I don't have to tell you this is different than what the World Health Organization has said, that, th that it's not transported through the air. What's your best information on that issue? Well, this is a new virus, and we're learning more about it every day. I talk to Tony Fauci multiple times a day, and he and Dr. Burks and the best virologist in the world still believe the primary mode of transmission for coronavirus is by droplet, which means, uh, again, social distancing okay. is going to be the most effective thing you can do. When you talk about surfaces, that's why we really emphasize the importance of washing your hands and constantly cleaning surfaces. 
If we do those three things, making sure we're cleaning our surfaces, making sure we're washing our hands, and making sure we're staying six feet away from people, that's how we will most protect ourselves from this disease. Dr. Adams, let's talk about testing. I don't think there's much dispute that the, the CDC was slow to get testing going, that, that there have been delays. I mean, even now we see lines, people trying to get the test, even though they're more widespread now. We still have only tested 59,000 people in the entire country when South Korea was doing 10,000 per day. The question is, what is the status now of testing? Are there enough tests out there, and are they being processed in a timely manner? Well, uh, a fair question, Savannah, and I really feel like we've turned the corner on testing this week. It's important for people to know the CDC stood up a test for this in a week, but the CDC was never equipped, staffed, or intended to provide testing for hundreds of millions of people. We were always going to rely on the commercial market and the private industry, and now with the FDA approval... Uh, or, or emergency use authorization for a high-speed test last week, you're seeing testing increase. And what American people really care about is, can I get a test in my community? You're starting to see that. The small rural community where I grew up in okay. offer drive-through testing this week. We're starting to see more and more people get testing. But here's the important point. You should not change your approach to mitigation measures based on a positive or a negative test. You could test negative and still be early in the incubation period and still spread coronavirus. So if you're sick, just like you did, yeah. stay at home. Uh, we should be acting as if stay. we have the virus, as Tony Fauci says, so that we can protect one another. Real quickly, because I'm almost out of time, but I do want to drill down the big question and the whole reason we're trying to flatten the curve and slow this down is so that our health care system can, can manage the patients who do come exactly. in and are very sick. Are you confident we have enough respirators and ventilators to help patients and protect our frontline health care workers? Great question. When you look at modeling, again, you've got curves that look like Italy and curves that look like South Korea. The best way to not run out of ventilators or PPE is to make sure you drive down demand so you don't need them. And that's why, again, we're leaning into the next 15 days.